Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at speciation, allopatric speciation, sympatric speciation, and then we'll finish with a summary. So speciation is basically the formation of two different species. If two populations become too genetically different or distinct, then we say they have speciated, they've become two separate species. So basically when speciation occurs, we have two different species evolving from an existing one. One of the examples of this is we have the gorilla as one of the large apes, and we also have chimpanzees, and they both actually originated from the same species. So there was an original species we'll just call X for now, and at one point the population of X had two distinct groups where they were too genetically different from each other now, and so they couldn't be classed as the same species anymore. So half of them were termed the gorilla, and half of them the chimpanzees. So speciation occurred, where one species grew two new ones. And it all comes back to the way that we define a species. A species is defined as a group of organisms which can reproductively produce new offspring, which are fertile. And a population usually has individuals in a species which can do this. But if a population has become reproductively isolated, then no mixing of genes can occur. So basically, if certain groups of organisms within a population become reproductively isolated, they can only reproduce with themselves, they can't reproduce with the other group. And this is the first step of speciation, because if they can no longer breed with this group to form fertile offspring, then this can no longer be considered as one massive species. They are now two species. And if the two populations are reproductively isolated for several generations, then enough genetic differences between them start to build up and accumulate. So for example, say a group of this original population became reproductively isolated, and they became the second species. At some point, there's going to be enough difference between these two groups due to genetic drift, also due to mutations, and also different selection pressures as well. So the distinctiveness that they have genetically will eventually divide them into two groups, where they have a different set of genetic diversity, and so they become two different species. And then they'll be genetically distinct enough where they cannot breed together and produce fertile offspring. So it's kind of a gradual process. Some of them will have some differences and will become reproductively isolated due to all of those changes to their DNA, and then they'll be classed as two different species. So reproductive isolation can come from two main methods, and one of them is called allopatric speciation. So in this case, the reproductive isolation of the two populations is caused by something physical, and it's a physical barrier. So we call it allopatric speciation. So it's defined as the formation of two species from an original one due to some geographical isolation. So it's due to the environment. So for example, we could be talking about a mountain range or something that separates two groups, where eventually they develop into their own species, species one and species two. Common barriers to gene flow include rivers, mountain ranges, deserts. So for example, a river may stop certain insects from one side getting to the other side so it doesn't have any gene flow or reproduction. Mountain ranges can stop lots of animals crossing, for example mammals, which would never get over the rise. And of course deserts can separate places which are very far apart, for example across Africa, where these animals would never survive crossing the desert, and so they never get to meet the population on the other side. The species that aren't really able to disperse very well are more likely to speciate allopatrically. So for example snails are very slow moving, and if they're separated by another group of snails, the same species, by this mountain, then the snails on each side will probably speciate into different species, because they're not very effective at being able to get around that mountain. However, ducks, for example, and other types of birds, are able to fly globally. So because of this, they're able to reproduce with different organisms of this same population across vast distances, so they're less likely to speciate. So it depends on whether the barrier can be crossed or not. The other method we have is called sympatric speciation. So speciation can still occur, but it doesn't need a geographical barrier this time. There's still reproductive isolation, but it's nothing to do with a physical barrier. So we call this sympatric speciation. So it's defined as the formation of two species from one original species due to reproductive isolation whilst occupying the same geographical location. So this is the big difference between allopatric. Allopatric needed a geographical barrier, Sympatric does not. So due to several reasons, people in this group will become reproductively isolated from the other 
but they will stay in the same geographical location. So how can this occur if they're not separated by a physical barrier? Well, it can be done in several ways. First of all, we've got temporal variation. So say we have a group of dandelions, all in the same population in the same area. By chance, they'll have some genetic diversity, because all organisms of a population are unique. And because of this, there'll be certain changes to their behaviour. So for example, some of them grow faster, and therefore, they might flower faster, while other ones may have the genes that make them grow a bit slower, and therefore they'll flower much after this one. So there may be seasonal changes in their behaviour. So even though they're classed as the same species and all do the same processes, they may just do them at different times. And because of this, over a few generations, the ones that grow slower might not ever be able to reproductively produce offspring with the ones that grow faster. So now we have to class them as two separate species. There's also behavioural changes or variation as well. So some insects and birds and certain colourful uh, creatures can do something called a courtship behaviour or carry out courtship behaviour, where they'll only attract certain mates attracted to particular colours or features. So because of this, they may not breed with a lot of others in their population. And if there's enough of a division between this, they'll form two groups which look for specific types of behaviour. So if there's massive changes in behaviour, if there's such a difference in behaviour between one group and another group, they'll become isolated, and therefore they'll become two new species. Variation in the gametes as well, or gametic variation. So for example, sunflowers don't like to be pollinated by particular genetic traits. So if pollen is blowing in the wind or on insects and lands at the stigma, it usually would pollinate to form the new egg. But actually some plants are selective to what they respond to and may not like the genetics of the stamen or pollen that's landed. So some plants choose not to reproduce. And this is a response to particular genetic setups. So because there's variation in the gametes, i.e. the pollen and the egg, they may not reproduce. And if this divides the group into two, this forms two new species. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.